Hello, this is turned into a video that we were not intending to make. Uh, we've lost the original part of the um, video, which was the turning of the body of the snowman. And uh, when we came back to it a week later, we found this. Yes, sir. We left the snowman uh, set between centres on the lathe and uh, Obviously the timber was quite green and you can see that it's cracked. Uh, luckily for us, I think it's cracked right down the line of the button. So we can sort of use that as um, a joint between um, the two sides of the clothes or whatever. Anyhow, so I think it's going to work out quite well. So we're going to fill it with, what's it, polyurethane foam glue? Hmm. Polyurethane foam glue and then we're going to work it back and uh, probably put epoxy resin over the top of it. Um, that's to be decided yet, but you can obviously see how it's cracked um, quite deliberately. So we're boring it out inside, hoping that obviously by boring it out, it can um, air on both sides and hopefully it won't crack anymore. But um, we're not sure. Um, it's our own fault for using green timber, basically. But uh, uh, and if we got on and done it straight away, <laughs> we wouldn't have had this problem. <laughs> um, we don't profess to be brilliant wood turners. Um, we're just two uh, old carpenters um, filling in our spare time, um, playing with um, a bit of wood and. Uh, We've decided to remove the head of the snowman. Uh, Chris is using. Is that a dovetail saw? I call it a London pattern saw. Oh, London. Well, Chris calls it a London pattern saw. I've always known it as a dovetail saw, I, I think. Well, at least that's what we used to call them. But, but never used to use them. So we're, I think that's, uh... we're, we're cutting the head off. Um, hopefully, that will give us a chance to it increase the hole size in the body and um, give us a chance to have a rethink about the head um, due to the split as you can see the set on the saw has gone a bit <laughs> yeah, I think what I'll do is use one you, of those sort of ones yeah, yeah. Yeah. as I said if I want to do any fine saw in these days I use a hacksaw or the, co or the coping saw Mind you, I haven't got a really fine tooth saw. All my, all my tenon saws have gone past the stage when I can. My sight's not good enough to uh, 
sharpening. Sharpening. It's one of those years since I had a go at sharpening the saw, we've been using we've been using a hard point well for virtually all my career it was hard point saws, other than the initial sort of four or five years of the apprenticeship and just after then the old sandvik hard points came in and when they were doing site work, I mean they they'd last you about a month. Gradually getting downgraded from from softwood to chipboard, and then we started using chainsaws to cut the chipboard. So that, 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 we even last a shorter time than that, unless you use them to cut plasterboard. Oh, so we did get. Did we get that through? Mm. Through that far now? No surprise, not how far we got through. Mm. It's always that last little bit, isn't it? Mm. Right. So, we could, in theory, enlarge the hole, couldn't we? Yeah. Do you think we can do it? Do you think we put a dowel in there and just bore it out with the... Or do you think we try it with a chisel? So we could plug the hole and, and do it with a forstner bit, couldn't we? Well, on this one. Yeah, well, I mean, that's not in the centre anyway, is it? So obviously, we went off a bit astray yeah. there somewhere. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've got a slightly... It's oversized now for that thing anyhow, isn't it? So... Uh, but the biggest one I got there is uh, is only 20 mil, and that was a 15 mil one that we put in. In so it's not really going to enlarge the hole very much by doing that. And have you got anything that's either that, or we try and turn it out, I suppose. But then we've got to reposition it then. Well, do, do it on that one. Stick it on 
Yeah. What's that? Yeah. It makes it a bit different, doesn't it? Chris is now going to turn the hat for the snowman. Bit high, yeah. That's a lot easier to film without the flipping, without the pallet there. <laughs> mm, a lot easier without the pallet. Mm. a bit flat at the bottom because normally you've got like a hat band don't you okay yeah and and then sort of it goes so, uh, yeah. well I can go with yeah so that would be about right because that would be the hat band wouldn't it that that yeah. bit there up to there and then obviously okay. flat flat across the top yeah. you want to uh, well you're not you're doing it you're doing, I'm just hmm. I'm just sort of saying normally you have like a a hat band that's Round the outside, don't you? Wondering if I go too far when it's gonna roll out at me. You've got to cut it off my hand, though. No, I couldn't stay there. Safe. I never. It always strikes me as a, a vulnerable type thing when you sit and reach over mm. and, and catch it, especially with that, because obviously both bits are gonna fall off. And then there's always that possibility that a pinch. Yeah. And then you end up getting hurt. <laughs> and as you say, you've got the belt sander there to clean anything up if you have to. Well, I tried to uh, sink it in a bit. Well, that is sunk a bit, isn't it? You've not got one of those grinding wheels like I have where you can just grind it out. I think I brought it with me. Did you? Yeah, we might pay to do that then, wouldn't you? Aren't it? Yeah, the, the, with the um, props on. Mm. Clean it in. So you just well, got to offset it, so yeah, it does look a bit. Yeah, so you've got to make a rim now, have you? Or? Yeah, I'll make a rim. Right. Yeah, Gerald's just shaving the uh, top of the top hat where I left the centre. Gerald's now just giving it a bit of character. <laughs> so, the idea was that we were going to turn the snowman and recess a hole into the bottom area of the snowman and fit a night light. And then we were going to machine uh, a hole in the top and fit the little flashing LED. Um, 
which we did in the end um, but the crack obviously caused a bit of a problem and initially we were thinking that we would fill the crack and then we decided that we would leave the crack sand it up and use it as like a joint between the overlap of the clothes and also it was quite effective or we thought it was quite effective uh, to see the uh, flashing light coming through the um, joint in the clothes as we'll call it um, so that's what we did